Hello everyone, what's going on? I'm Gav from Master974 back again today and welcome to another Valve Source Code tutorial follow-up video and today I'm going to be giving a minor follow-up to the Parallax Corrected Cube Map video that I did quite a long time ago and this will also include a very minor follow-up to the PBR shader as well. So I don't actually have anything to follow up on in regards to the shader source files but it's rather how to get the light mapped generic version of the shaders working properly, apparently, which would include some minor changes to the VBSP code. So let's get into what you need to do. You need to open up the everything solution, go to the VBSP project, go to source files, and you should see a file called utilmatlib.cpp in there. If you don't see it, then basically go to src utils common utilmatlib.cpp and then you want to find the init material system function and at the end of it you want to add g underscore p material system arrow mod init and that's pretty much all you need to do just build the solution and what it should do is allow vbsp to utilize custom shaders during the map compilation process so if you take for example the pbr shader it doesn't look as if matt fulbright is on when you play around with the map and look around and stuff. Now this is using the stock map that Fixer 4 provided for usage with that shader. So you can test this out on your own terms and let me know if this actually ends up working or not. Of course the same thing should apply to the parallax corrected cube map as well but there's actually going to be further additions to the VBSP codes that we're going to make to actually improve the matrix codes that's used. So I do need to give a thank you to ZeldaBoy14 and White Red Dragons for this, at least according to the credits from Mapbase. And so what you want to do is go to map.cpp and then you want to remove the hashtag include of matrix invert.h, but you want to replace that with hashtag include of mathlib forward slash vmatrix.h. And then you want to go to around line 1660 with the definition of a matrix 3x4 underscore t of ob matrix then in ob matrix and you want to change those lines there to the following so you actually want to create a v matrix called ob matrix and in ob matrix as you'll see and then do matrix set identity of ob matrix and then matrix set identity of in ob matrix I find this a little funny because initially the lines were set identity matrix, but we're changing them to matrix set identity instead. So basically we're shifting around the words a little bit. But as far as I can tell, not to delve too much into technical details, a V matrix is a 4x4 matrix, whereas a matrix 3x4 underscore T is, well, a 3x4 matrix. Now you might not think that it makes too much of a difference going from a 3x4 to a 4x4 matrix but apparently that difference does matter and especially because we'll be using some built-in functions to help improve the efficiency of the code. Anyway so the next thing you want to do is go to around line 1717 and you want to change the matrix set column lines to the following. So you want to do ob matrix dot set forward of x ob matrix dot set left of y, ob matrix dot set up of z, and ob matrix dot set translation of corner. And then below this with the matrix inversion line, you want to replace that with matrix inverse general of ob matrix then inv ob matrix. And compile the code, build the solution, and then what you should find is that this matrix code should not only work more efficiently, but what you should also find is that you don't get assertion errors when using VBSP when trying to compile a map with Parallax Corrected QMap support. Now one thing I have to say as well is I did have some trouble trying to get the Parallax Corrected QMap shader working in preparation for my GitHub update which I hope is going to happen sometime in the near future. But I think the issue was with the shader source files. As far as I can tell, the issue was not with VBSP or adding code to shader project in a custom game shader dx9.dll file. It was the actual shader source files when they get compiled that apparently had some issues and didn't end up working. So I ended up copying shader files from a project where the parallax corrected Q map effect actually ended up working correctly. 
and I have a feeling that they might be from map base. So I'll just uh, leave that as a little disclaimer here. And also one thing I noticed during testing is that it seems as if the flashlight doesn't actually show up correctly on this custom shader and I don't know how to resolve the issue. Although I think with a recent update that MapBase has had, this issue has been fixed. So the last thing I'm going to get to with this video is an obvious question that I think a lot of people watching this might actually have, which is, does this work with the new Source 2013 multiplayer code? And I think the answer is yes, because unlike Source 2013 single player, the Source 2013 multiplayer code now actually gives you complete access to the standard shaders and it even allows you to overwrite the shaders. Now I'm bringing this up because if you actually try to overwrite one of the stock shaders in a Source 2013 single player mod, then you'll actually get an error message that will cause the game to not load. It won't even have an assertion error or anything like that. There will just be an error message and the game will crash. So I'm bringing this up because there is an omission on the Parallax Corrected Cube Map Guide and I thought it was worth bringing this up. Basically for Source 2013 single player mods, you do need to call the shader something like SDK underscore light mapped generic. And that is in light mapped generic DX9.cpp by the way. Now my testing in Source 2013 multiplayer mods didn't go very well to put it lightly. I was actually going to make a claim in this video only like a couple days ago if I did this audio recording a couple days ago that it took me about three hours to compile all the shaders, at least in a Source 2013 multiplayer mod where all of the shader source was added. But uh, no, it didn't take me three hours. It took me closer to seven. Yeah, I'm not joking, close to seven hours to compile shaders. And I wasted all of that time to basically bring up the point that shader compilation takes a very long time. And I wanted to see if it actually took three hours. And it didn't, it took closer to seven. See, I'm wasting seven hours of my life for you guys. You don't even know half of it, seriously. But yeah, even with that, there are some shaders that don't compile and I don't know why. And if you actually load into a mod, then you might notice some errors, especially when you, for example, set an explosive barrel on fire, then the fire particles will just show up as white squares. But that's all I really have to say for this video. I just wanted to give a brief update to the Parallax Corrected Cube Map Guide and a very minor follow-up to the PBR Guide as well, but I'll chalk this up as a follow-up to the Parallax Corrected Cube Map Guide that I did a long time ago. As always, let me know what you think about this. I apologize for making mistakes as per usual. I know I've made several in this video. And if there's anything that I'm missing, then I'm sorry. And let me know in the comment section down below. But yeah, hopefully you have some better luck with this shader stuff than I have. So take care out there, peace out, see you later. Hopefully you'll check out the next Valve Source Code tutorial follow-up video, whatever it might be. And why not check out another video on the channel in the meantime? So have a great day and I'll see you for the next video.